a small business today. I heard that. It is time for another episode of the Cultural Hall. It is a uh, special Articles of News episode in that uh, there are multiple people, multiple co-hosts uh, that are here. Because here in the first block, what we're going to talk about is uh, a recent adventure, an outing. Uh, if you will, that we recently did. And then coming up in the second block, we'll do actual articles of news as I introduce them as they are in front of me uh, on my Zoom, which, by the way, if you're a Patreon saint, you get to see these beautiful faces, not just hear the voices, patreon.com forward slash the cultural hall. Uh, as I see first, it's Annette, the luthiest lion there is. How are you? I am doing fabulous. How are you? Fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> you know, I should point out, and this is terrible, and I should never say something like this, but here we go. Uh, we oftentimes, I think, record in the early morning, and I think that I have pulled you right out of bed on oft occasions. And so, uh, like, you are made up for the day. You look fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, and I I, I try to avoid recording in the morning, as you know, because sure. oh, I, I, I'm i I'm a night owl. I'm a night yeah. owl. So, yep. yeah. Yep. So yep. what he's saying is he's, you don't normally look that fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this is a mixed compliment. Read between thing. the lines. <laughs> this, is a, this is a thank you question mark. I was trying to avoid what you just did. That voice you hear. <laughs> well, see, uh, this is perfect because that now I did it to you and I didn't have to do it to well, myself. No, here, here's the thing. Actually, I know I look very, very different with and without makeup. Mm -hmm. I've had like my next door neighbor and my bishop walk right past me, not noticing, not recognizing me. So I get it. I do look very different with and without when I'm put together. So, But you listen, know. you look fantastic. That's all Thank that you. matters. Appreciate take that it. as the compliment. And now I'll take it. Mr. Mayor himself. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I uh, also well. How are things in the hottest state in the union? For now, it's a state in the union. I try not to go outside, so I really don't know. I try to yeah. stay out, out of the outside. I, get, I run to my car in the garage, uh -huh. get in it, make sure the AC's on, go wherever I'm going and get home. It's okay. just terrible right now. Just miserable, miserable. Any? Uh, is it in sight to be a little bit less hot and terrible in texas i have no idea i stopped watching the weather report it got i kept looking for like 10 days out maybe there's some relief nope last time i looked nope yeah nothing i i don't think august will be anything different than july so. okay yeah i mean it is a different month but i appreciate the concept yeah. of what you're trying to say for sure uh and then megan the mitch mitchell hello how are you so wonderful so wonderful how are you uh, also, well, uh, people that are frequent uh, visitors, that is, uh, video watchers of the Cultural Hall, those Patreon saints and the people that have found out that we also put videos occasionally on YouTube, uh, likely notice that you're not in your blanket fort uh, for you're tonight's not. show. So sorry to see that. Well, my nine-year-old likes to come down and play podcaster. Like uh -huh. She likes to come and move my stuff around and pretend that she's podcasting. Uh -huh. And I have... Um, my blanket for is a Jimmy rig sound booth uh -huh. and I have like um, clothespins and binder clips holding it all together. And she moved them all and I can't find them. Oh, well, oh. it's a little prank, so, little game little she bit. likes to play. It, it's, a, it's a fun recording halo you have. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, if you want to know where your things are, you should put them away and then you'll know where they are. Do you, any of your guys is, I know, uh, Andrew, you don't have kids, so we can pretend like we know what we're talking about here, but. Do either of your kids do the things where they try and teach you guys a lesson like you try and taught them? My favorite one is, Mom, if you want me to answer my texts or answer your text messages when you text me, you need to answer your text messages when I text you. Um, and I'm like, give me your phone that I'm paying for. I'll take it back now. <laughs> but, a, but a valuable lesson. What about for you, Annette? Uh, well, I had a lot of, of things over the years, of course, but the one that just that hit me first was actually when my oldest was a toddler. He's 28 now, so this is a long time ago. But, but yeah, you, you're oftentimes parents are counseled to you know don't tell your kids what like you're going to do this, okay? You give them two options. Like, mm -hmm. do you want to do this or this? And so I'm, I was kind of working through that to, to avoid meltdowns. Smart kid that he was, we're at the grocery store one day, and sitting in his car, he goes, "Mom, 
do you want to buy me a, a three minutes of musketeers or a Snickers? Yeah. <laughs> He's a salesperson. Like, Dang, I'm stuck. Like, you little stink. I'm like, cause he, he, cause that, that's what I've, I've been giving we him need, options, We need to up so. his game just slightly. We need to give him three options. The, a terrible option, a really good, yeah. a, a really high expensive option, and then one in between. Mid-range. And that's the yeah, he, he yeah, was a smart kid. I mean, he's still, I mean, he was very, very smart as a small child. So, yes, that was. Uh, as a follow-up question, if I may, what did you end up buying? Which one? Uh, neither. No. What? <laughs> I laughed and I was like, oh, no, you have to behave before we can get a treat. Wow. So he, was... I had I had to make sure he behaved. I think he may have gotten a treat at, at, at the checkout and he got mm-hmm. to pick which one. But it, the whole point was you have to behave at the grocery store if you're going yeah. to get a treat at the end. So. Yeah. That's what and my that, wife yeah. tells me. And that, my friend, is the plan of salvation. <laughs> you have yes, to behave it is. If, if you want to there you go. Right you the treat at the end. Uh, That's so our metaphor for the day. We're all here uh, because the four of us and uh, one more, uh, a friend of mine, actually from my old ward in downtown, who uh, I didn't know was coming but showed up to join us, all made our way downtown to the Church History Museum and decided that we would check out the Minerva Tykert uh, Art Museum. The the installation, I think, is the word that art people use for it. And... Um, uh, I think it was interesting. I'm not sure which one of you pointed it out to me, but we said, oh, we better hurry and get down there because we knew that it closed August 3rd. What we didn't notice until long after the fact that it's August 3rd, 2024. So we had an entire year. <laughs> so we thought we would get together uh, and be able to talk. Yeah, about- hurry down there. Yeah. Get down there. And in the hopes that, uh, you know, as you listen to this, that maybe it encourages you to go check it out and, um, we are also in in works, and I'd say probably 50-50 on this, uh, to be able to do a special after hours at the museum, limited number of people with a Minerva Tykert specialist kind of, um, I don't want to say swanky, uh, but a nice evening out to be able to Lightly learn more about Minerva Tykert. Yeah, yeah, uh, an exclusive kind of thing. So we're working on that. And when we're done there, we'll go to the tiger exhibit at the Hogel Zoo. So everything that night is tigers related. I appreciate that. (laughs) Except that joke is reserved for Mr. Mayor. That's the kind of jokes that he makes. So that's right. Uh, Wouldn't it be fun to dress like a tiger as like a masquerade party? Everyone dress like a tiger to go (laughs) to the tiger museum that would I, i'd fly you know. in for that okay okay well then listen if we're gonna if we're gonna do this which i tried to stop but <laughs> since we've gone uh what do we then eat i know what the dessert is frosted flakes what are you talking about oh okay oh, that's a good connection go. that's good a good one. connection yeah. just a cereal yeah. bar with frosted flakes okay Perfect. okay because i know what dessert is uh out on the patio we have snow cones and the only available flavor Tiger's blood. Tiger's blood. Tiger's blood. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Excellent. I hate us. I hate everybody. <laughs> we are the worst kind of people. Have- this is why we don't get all four of us. But see, and this is like so. The one thing that cracked me up, and this is just not to go into the exhibit too soon, talking about it. But oh, you're welcome. Take us there. when. So we go into the the front desk and Richie's like, all right, going to all the important looking people. What do we do? What's the best place to start? Tell how, you know, who do we talk to? And this woman was, what she was trying to tell us was that there are very clear signs that tell you what's going on in the years things happened. But she used the word, it's very explicit, (laughs) is what she said. And to our credit, all four of us kept a straight face. But as we walked away, we're like, explicit. And we all started laughing. Oh, I had so many comments that I just decided was not appropriate in that. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So uh, my immediate thought, since I guess this is where we kind of sort of start, I thought, how come I don't come here more often? Uh, Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure even what the last exhibit was or if they know what the next exhibit is, the installation there. But uh you know, it's it's located right to the west of uh, Temple uh, of uh, Temple Square. Technically, maybe on Temple Square, depending on how you define that. Um, well, the good thing is, is if we're going to have the after hours, we'll get the explicit <laughs> after hours directions. Richie, I mean, you need to mute his mic. Yeah, how do we do that? <laughs> uh, but um, going in and knowing that that was great. And then I didn't realize this either, and I should have. Uh, that there's a gift shop at the Church History Museum, almost as big 
as the museum itself. Like mm -hmm. it, it's a good portion of the first floor. And I think it was uh, Andrew that was Mr. Mayor that was saying, oh, they should definitely have a um, like a cafe that people can buy funeral potatoes. And several sure. people chuckled <laughs> at his comment. And I was like, Man, it's not it's not too far. Not off. a bad idea. It's not wrong. Not a bad but idea. Well, they're working on the Lion House. They could have Lion House roles at the Church History Museum. I'm yeah. just there are there are lots Lion of House roles and funeral potatoes. Yep. And just it's yeah. on brand. Yeah. Church history, you yeah. know. And then yeah. a place for a nap, Andrew, if they have <laughs> Lion totally. House rolls and funeral potatoes. Like well, that was that video we watched. I was yeah. gonna yeah. say you just go lay down in the little movie room, the theater. <laughs> uh immediate uh, impressions is either of you, Andrew or Megan. Maybe we go Andrew first and then the Mitch. So uh, I <laughs> First of all, I mean, I've only seen a few Minerva Tiger, and I I didn't want to go digging into them because I wanted to experience them there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I knew enough. I'd been to the Manti Temple and everything. I thought I was really just impressed by how well she can draw out the emotion. I'm I'm a I'm a fan of more impressionist type of art anyway, just because mm -hmm. it allows. I feel like it allows me to kind of. Uh, put myself in in the pictures more just sometimes about the 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 it's like i'm squinting my way into the reality that she mm -hmm. creates and so um but that's what i got is that there was just an emotional level that just came through in the art in every bit that that brought me it it made me relate to the 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 subject matter so closely like when we i saw there was one several about pioneers and immediately thought of my own ancestors and mm. and and several things. In fact, I it made me think of them so well. I went back and did some reading about some stories about some of them that night because I it was it brought me a, brought that out of me. So that's my overall impression of everything in there. And then the picture of the savior that um, at that one point though in the red, I can't mm -hmm. remember. It's just striking. And even though I was making jokes everywhere around that. You notice I probably didn't make any silly comments right around there. Sure, sure, so. sure. So we we posted that one on the Instagram. If people want to go look at that, the you can four find of us in front of that one at the cultural hall is where you find that, yeah. or Instagram.com forward slash that cultural hall. The Mitch, what do you think as you kind of so, come in? Yeah, so I um didn't really know much about Minerva Tiger almost at all, mm -hmm. and I mean I could pick out her paintings, um, but knowing about her life. I, I didn't know anything. And um, I know there's a lot of people who are really big fans of hers. And I was like, well, she's just like this woman who painted and like, she's obviously talented, but like beyond that, it, it didn't really, like, I didn't have a lot of uh, context, mm -hmm. but there was one, one thing that really stood out to me and Richie, I kind of turned to you and said this, I was uh, in reading about her life. I, uh, I said, she is literally the epitome of a mother who can call down miracles. And mm. you're like, oh, well, tell me about that. And there were two different instances in her life where um, first one being when her and her child got really, really sick with uh, influenza. The and Spanish, she, the best Spanish flu pandemic. Spanish yeah. flu. Yeah, exactly. And she said, um, she prayed to Heavenly Father and said, if you heal us, I will honor you with my talents, basically for the rest of my life. Mm. And they came through it. She ended up with white hair after the fact. And she believed that that was a manifestation of Heavenly Father giving her this miracle. Um, and so she went on to paint. And then a few years later, her son went missing. And she prayed and said, Heavenly Father, if you bring my son home, I will stop painting. I will give it all up because all I care, like I want my son back. And they found him and she stopped painting for something like several weeks, maybe even months. And then, but she realized she couldn't live without it. And so she prayed again, asking Heavenly Father, do I have your permission to continue painting? And it's, a, it's incredible to me, another, number one, that she had the faith to call down these miracles from heaven. That's what I'm going to say that she was doing. And then how she was true to her word in honoring Heavenly Father and his son, Jesus Christ, through her talents and consecrating those to the Lord. And that was the word that came to my mind was because we think of, oh, we don't, we're not doing, you know, the law of consecration, we think, because we aren't living the specific the way. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But the United Order is just one way of doing it, but consecrating our talents, whatever that looks like. And as a creative right. person myself, and Andrew's a writer too, 
-hmm. that's a big deal to me to think that I can consecrate what I'm doing in some fashion Mm -hmm. to the Lord. And I think it's fascinating what you brought up too, that she offered to give it up. But Mm -hmm. I think if I remember right, her answer was you already promised to serve me with your art. So please keep doing that. Yeah. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. It's kind of like Samuel's mom, right? Isn't Samuel in a similar way covenant, uh, you know, for Samuel. Anyway, it just made me think of Samuel's mother from the old Testament. Yeah. So, so one of the things that impressed me is, um, I, I feel like, um, for a group of people, Minerva Tiger is sort of set up as this, um, what do I want to say? Almost like a, uh, like a maverick, like, uh, Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, uh, uh, busting down the stereotypes and, uh, you know, all the things. And, um, I think it's unique. And the, the, the thing that I sort of gained from the experience is, in a lot of ways she was right in that she, you know, she left and learned and trained and then, you know, came back and, and being a woman, just even in this time to do these things, highly significant. It almost sounds ignorant to say it in a 21st century context, but that's not in the time that she lived. Um, but to be able to, um, to see that there are multiple times and, and the exhibit uh, gets into this briefly um where she just was like yeah we're doing it this way but i actually think this is the thing that i'm going to do so sort of a tradition thing not only within her art but in the way that she led her life and in what she was doing and said yes that but i'm going to do it this way and um and sometimes today we have those people that do that and and you know, we call them sort of disruptors or people within the faith, the agitators of the faith who maybe don't believe, but are trying to have these things to cause for change or to do something different. And, and what struck me about her was here's a woman who very, um, very, very firmly believed in, um, the doctrine firmly believed in, in the heavenly father, firmly believed in the talents that she was blessed from God to be able to have. And, said hey here are the ways that we are doing some things and maybe we could do some different and th- and that and that struck me um quite a bit the other thing and i made this comment to each of you individually and i and i thought it was so great cuz no one knew what to say and <laughs> i didn't know what i wanted you to say but uh looking at her paintings i don't think that i realized how uh how bright slash bold some of the colors were it's not an overwhelming bright and bold uh you know like um like Jorge Coco, uh, if you know who that is, Elias artist who does those kind of things, but um, but there is a lot of bright colors, small glimpses of it in there that stopped me multiple times to go, this is a scene, you know, crossing the plains or whatever, but this is very interesting. This bright thing that is going on was uh, w- was pretty significant. I thought he definitely knows how to use color and light to bring your attention and bring the emotion, but also the focus of what she's doing. Yeah. Um, One right thing out. that they actually had on display was the like a shawl that she had that had Paisley design on it. Mm-hmm. That she wor- she loved that shawl and she worked it into many of her paintings. And so a lot of her paintings have a lot of the browns and and, and yellows and that kind of thing of the West. That's more of a deserty kind of escape. But then she has those pops of color of. Mm-hmm you know, of, of a shawl or, you know, whatever else it might be. It's um, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And one thing I loved also that she might, one of the quotes that she had on there, um, well, backing up, I remember going to the, to MoMA in, in, in New York and going, wow, some of these paintings, these really famous ones are so small. <laughs> Which is in the real museum life. of modern art for people who have yeah, no sorry, idea yeah. what you just were talking about. And, and I've heard the, like, the Mona Lisa is teeny tiny, but this sure. was the opposite. I've seen prints yeah. of these paintings, but then some of them are just massive. They're immersive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're just immersed in them. Yeah. And she said herself that most of her paintings, she goes, please stand 20 feet back. <laughs> you know, even farther would be better because it is more of an impressionistic thing. And so here I am, I, I love standing up nice and close, but I thought, you know, she wants us to see it back here. So I would take a step back and go, what did she want us to see? And then it, it does change what the painting looks like. It's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so I, I just have a couple comments to wrap us out. Does anyone have anything else that they, about either the experience, the art, the the woman, the uh, all the things? Yes, Megan, the Mitch Mitchell. I do. I'm raising my hands. Um, <clears throat> So the thing that really impressed me was um, you can tell that she wasn't just some woman who decided, well, I'm going to learn how to paint and I'm going to teach myself. And it's, you know, she throws paint up on a canvas and suddenly it becomes something like she clearly had 
extensive training and had um, knowledge of, and I didn't look super extensively into her actual training, but she had extensive knowledge, obviously, of what was going on in art in other parts of the world, potentially. And I say that because my favorite painting, the one that spoke to me the most, I think it's called um, something like Madonna in a covered wagon or something along those lines. <clears throat> and if anybody has seen like art from the Renaissance, there's tons of pieces called Madonna and child or, you know, and it's usually Mary with the baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this painting, um, I took a picture of it because I thought it was so beautiful. It's a woman in a red shawl sitting on a covered wagon, holding her baby. And it is, it looks like what you would see in the Uffizi gallery in Florence, Italy, you know, the, the Madonna, the typical Madonna kind of almost haloed in this covered wagon. And it was just, it was so meaningful to me. Again, I relate to her as a mother and what she did for her children. And that's what she's portraying is this woman making sacrifices to cross the plains with her child, keeping them safe, keeping them warm, keeping them healthy as best as she could. And I, I thought it just really epitomized the love of a mother. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's something that my, my kind of final thoughts, one was that education was so important to her. So I know she went to the Art Institute of Chicago. I think she went to New York at some point too. Yeah. And, um, and part of these things funded by the church, the church paid for some of her art education, which is yeah. significant. To and know. then she went on and she was able to pay for her own children's college educations with her art and then went on to pay for dozens, they said, of other students to have to have their tuition paid by donating her art. Um, to BYU and there was actually one small sketch that was on the wall and I'm like that of like a Native American and I'm like, I thought that looks so much like that statue on BYU campus and then you read the caption and sure enough it turned they, they made a statue of it I'm like I didn't know she did statues hmm. um, but one thing people might find interesting as well um, that there is a little remnant the very bottom of a painting that was left over that it was burned down part of the Provo Tabernacle that it that was the last it it survived but it's just like a six inch little bit that survived and it's on display there so if we, if we have prints of the original before it was destroyed but so that, that was kind of cool and slash tragic to see yeah. andrew any last words and then i've got just a couple comments to wrap it out and then we'll take a break and come back and do news with all four of us well my I, one of my I, I had a lot of favorite paintings one of my favorite paintings was one of it looks like about five or six um american indians on a horse and and she portrays there's a sadness to them as they're walking around and I, I really like that it, it kind of stands out to me but there's so many others though that 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 um i really like but one of the other things about the experience set aside what we've talked about from her is that it was wonderful for the first time meeting in person several of you mm. um uh, it, you know, it it, it kind of grounds me as a co-host on here that I I've actually finally met you and you guys are real people. Yeah, you're not you're not like a fake a fake person that Richie Richie conjures up. That, that's yeah. a real... <laughs> well, wouldn't that be cool? We're like real <laughs> friends and stuff now. Yeah, yeah. you, you guys are all just as genuine in person as you are on the air, so to speak. Well said. Uh, here's the things that I would say about the thing. Uh, one plan on like an hour to like three hours. Uh, if you're going to go, if you're just going to see specifically the Tykert part of the exhibit, you could probably, I mean, you can blast through it in like 10 minutes if you'd like. Um, it's worth doing that. If you're just going to be like, going to go in, going to go check it out and then be done. Uh, I would recommend, you know, somewhere between like an hour and three hours. I don't think that kids get it or enjoy it they try and make it accessible at least a couple activities for well, there's yeah i was gonna say there's some kids areas yeah. they can go in yeah, but for the most part uh i wouldn't say unless your kid has uh a, a real you know interest in something like this i don't think that it's probably i don't know heck i don't i don't even know that i'd say like under 16 maybe or just kids in general, if it's someone or husbands or, or wives, right? If they're not interested, just leave them home and go do it yourself. It's better to be able to enjoy it rather than be like, yeah, I know it's not very much, but I want to read this. I want to see this. That's one thing. Uh, the church does a really great job about, uh, I think, seven little handouts that you can do to learn more about the specific paintings. And that would be the one perhaps uh, critique that I had 
I, and why I want to do kind of this after hours thing with someone that is knowledgeable about that particular thing. I wanted to be able to ask questions from someone who knew uh, more. And I found, and, and it's no sort of slight uh, to the people that are working there at the museum, but I asked what I felt like was the most basic of questions and was, they were like, I, I don't know. And I was like, okay, this that is not what these people are. These people are making sure I don't touch anything and that I move along quickly. And and so if you're going to to um, have someone explain a lot of that to you, that is not what that is. It is very much to be done on your own or done you know, beforehand or as we kind of did, experienced there in the moment, looking things up and and be able to check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, but they're not even trained in knowledgeable docents, and that's not a knock on them. Yeah. Like, but you know, in a museum, you have a expect to have some amount of knowledge or something that they were trained on, and they just yeah, they didn't. And they're volunteers; they're doing missionary work. So I get sure. it. Again, again, that was just the thing that I wanted. That was not there. That's an accurate way I think to kind of have that because I am the guy that like. When I went to the Helena Montana Temple, I, everyone's like, "Oh, it's a temple! It's great!" And I'm like, "All right, so this modular thing, like, is it a crank? Is there a key that I can put in a wall and disconnect these things? Where, like, those are the kind of things I wanted to know." You just get this blank face of, yeah. "I don't know." Yeah. It was so, modular, yeah. okay. Well, what was you're, that? Yeah, you're so clearly... I said the handouts were actually prints of specific mm -hmm. paintings with information uh -huh. on the back. So just mm -hmm. want to clarify that it's not just a whole bunch of papers. Yeah, you actually get these beautiful, mm -hmm. and they were like what five by seven or bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. even they're frameable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, frameable and yeah. the information of that painting on the back of each one. Yeah, way to learn a little bit more and and also to teach you what to spot. So there you go. Check it out. Uh, if there if it does come to fruition that we do this actual event, you will obviously hear about it here in the cultural hall. So we hope that you will join us that way. Let's take it. And if you wear tiger things, I will fly in for it. Me tiger or out. anyone. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone, if, 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 if that's the anything. idea, if that's the idea of the event is that everyone shows up in tiger related so, so totally I really was that. hoping you were going to let this die, but now I want to go a step further. Can you imagine <laughs> we finally get after hours permission and a professional like, you know, uh, art historian, art historian and a bunch of yahoos from the cultural hall show up dressed like tigers or tiger print or all furries. These things. Yeah. All these little <laughs> furries, some costumes, some bunch complaints. of cosplay. Yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> Can you imagine what like that we're here. Was like and how we would <laughs> never be allowed to do something yep. like that again? Mm, never again. Nope. All right. Let's well, now, now I have now I have in my mind that we all dress up in like like big coats like she wore and stuff, but they're all tiger print. <laughs> so it's anyway, sorry. Ooh, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll do actual articles of news. Here in the second half of articles of news, we do actual articles of news. Hit a Peter. And away we go, y'all. So much news. I was horribly not, um, you know, producing the episodes. Here's the deal. We've got like five or six interviews that have been recorded. And so if you're a Patreon saint, you've had access to them for a while. So I haven't done uh, an interview for a bit. But, uh, you know, I uh, I haven't stopped working since I got back from vacation. And so... Um, now this week I'll actually be able to get caught up, but I've done like 11 events in the last nine days and they were all multiple, multiple hours. So I apologize, but also, uh, you know, the events pay the bills. And, uh, so, so take that. Where'd you go you on know, vacation? Where'd I you went go? To go see, I went to go see my mom. Which oh, means fun. Pacific Northwest. Gorgeous. Pacific, Pacific Northwest. We're, we're going to get to as many news stories as we can in this time. We haven't Snapchat. talked about uh, what stories we're going to do in advance. And I'll be mad at Megan and Annette and anyone who stole my stories. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Be and bitter. About bite me. Yeah. Bite me, Andrew. <laughs> I thought you said bite me. And I, I like, did too. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> that was very bite me. Right. Like, wow, <laughs> Megan. Okay. But we know the Mitch. She'll put you in cement boots. So watch it, Mr. Mayor. Watch There's it. Story. Uh, I'm going to take the first one because I can, and I don't want anyone else to take the story. I uh, was first made aware from this because uh, Matthew, who does the cultural halls, do we call it Twitter still, or is it X, the Twitter feed? It's Twitter. X, I'm sorry. Twitter, Always will be. Until it dies, which is getting awfully close. But yeah. uh, it, it was shared this, and someone said, uh, 
man cannot le- live on breaded meat alone. And then I clicked on the link and I just absolutely love this story. Um, there is a man that is facing a felony charge after allegedly breaking into a meeting house of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and stealing chicken nuggets. Now, Daniel Jason Coleman, age 49, arrested for burglary, a third-degree felony. This uh, past Saturday, the Provo Police Department received a call about a man who had entered the church building. The caller told the police that they said, hey, it's this guy, Coleman. He's been uh, wandering around through the neighborhoods looking into cars and backyards. They arrived on the scene. They found a single unlocked door. All the other doors were reportedly secure. And upon entering, they found a place, uh, they found a bag of frozen nuggets uh, headed their way back towards the fridge. And he was taking three to four nuggets from the microwave and eating them. Coleman reportedly told the officers he had taken the chicken nuggets from the fridge and had eaten them. Officers said that because Coleman had unlawfully entered a church building, without a legitimate reason to be there, and because he admitted to taking food that was not his from the building, he was booked into the Utah County Jail. So I I just want everyone to recognize this. He ate four chicken nuggets that were not his and went to jail on a third-degree felony. So when that other ward in your building leaves food in the fridge <laughs> and the youth start to think, oh, listen, I'm going to go ahead and grab that, I want you to know what your kids or you adults, I know I've done it plenty of times, what you are considering is a third degree felony. So if you didn't bring it, leave and it now, there. now I got to repent of a lot of times when I stole <laughs> nuggets off my friend's trays in, yeah, in high school. Yeah. Yes. See, oh man. But, but we all know what I'm talking about, right? Like when yeah. one ward leaves something in the fridge yeah. and you're yeah. like, man, I'm hungry. What is that? Yeah. That's been there a couple of days, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I bet yeah, I could sure. take one and they would never know. Third degree felony. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have two questions on this. Number okay. one, were they regular nuggets or were they dino nuggies? Ooh. Because I feel like that's a really important distinction. Okay. Number okay. two, was he actually in trouble because he actually like cooked the nuggets in the microwave, which we're not supposed to cook things. Uh, well, they'd be just eating the, them up if they're frozen that's nuggets. That's true. So. Maybe it was just warming yeah. them. So it's still... Or did he break? Was part of it breaking into the chapel when he shouldn't have been there? Was that the bigger part? I'm gonna guess that that was the biggest part. I thought the biggest thing is is that it was fast Sunday. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's not even the laws of the land that he broke. He didn't bless him either. I'm so sure. No, I bet you didn't pray. Not before (laughs) or after. And what was he intending to? This is terrible. Uh, And I, I, it doesn't say the trespassing. Obviously, he was trespassing, but it it, it does not say that that is the charge which caused him to be. It was that he ate four (laughs) chicken nuggets that did not belong to him from a church that he shouldn't have been in. Um, At the end of 2022, I was helping with a funeral Mm and our state building. And there was like three gallons of milk in there. Mm -hmm. And it was literally like right at the end of the year. And I'm like, this isn't for a party or anything. So I gave the the gallons of milk to the missionaries. They were unopened. So mm-hmm. come lock me up. Felon. She's a so felon. Someone came in and went, where the crap is my milk? <laughs> I was I'm, I'm stuck on the fact that it was four chicken nuggets. Like, how do we know? Was it really six? Like, how do they know? Yeah. Like, I mean, right. it, it was four. Symbology. But, I don't know. It makes me laugh. I heard he's part of the Illuminati and he was, I don't know. That's where you get into stuff like that. Some sort of symbolism with the number of the thing. I also loved and appreciated that um, in the uh, in the news article, and I think it was ABC4, which is a news outlet here in Utah, was like, um, the policemen uh, weren't sure that church services weren't in session. And I'm like, <laughs> it's a chapel in Provo, and the policemen are going to a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know that they had been to that ward since they were four. They knew that church services weren't going on there. So I think I've beaten that horse uh, dead enough. I would like to go to, uh, as we see it on my screen, uh, Annette. The Luthiest line. All what right. story you're going to do next? So this is keeping things on the lighter end of stuff. So I found this fascinating study that a professor of, let's see, he's in the Chicago University of Chicago School of Business, something like that. Okay. He decided to analyze using cell phone data, which people have done a lot to do things like predict uh, attendance at uh, baseball games and 
people who, how many people are going to buy things at McDonald's or whatever. So he decided to use the same technology um, and track church attendance across various denominations. Okay. And so he has all of these different charts and it was pretty hilarious because you get most Christians and it's like low attendance, low attendance throughout the year. Then it's like Easter, <laughs> da, 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 Christmas. And then he had Latter-day Saints and it was like up here, up here, boom, Easter. I'm sorry it was like what well, no sorry about that a little bit off the Easter and Christmas were down a little bit I think but the okay. big booms where it was general conference where it was sure. like so no one's going obviously because uh... there's no cell phone no one's at church but it was just funny to see so I, I can even post some of the, the graphics but it was like yeah Latter-day Saints are an outlier on this one this is this is interesting and I'm like we can explain that very easily but Anyway. A, a question I have for you guys about that. Uh, I have both done this and not done this in my life. Do you guys ever go to other church services around Christmas and Easter? I know sometimes people will go to like a midnight mass with Christmas Eve, uh, anything like that. I, you guys ever... Years ago, if I was singing in something, yes, I would. But, but, not, but never not on your anymore. own volition. Just be like, hey, these guys are doing this thing and I'm going to go well, check it out. Well, I mean, yeah, I, not, not recently. I, mean, I usually want to stay home. I usually don't want to go to my church. <laughs> <laughs> I did some of that with uh, when we were living in Finland. So like, my sister was was singing a Christmas thing at a different at Lutheran church or whatever, and so would go and listen to that. that but kind of but thing. but I guess my but question is so never just own. for like a uh, hey, because like in my in my um, just down the road there's an old the uh, Taylorsville um, not chapel. It's the old uh, you know they've got them in St. George Tabernacle. It's like one of those old kind of buildings here in Taylorsville. Uh, the church sold it to the Islamic community. And so there's an Islamic congregation that meets. I have thought about, and I don't know what time they meet. Oh, but they have a great Christmas service. Yeah. Boo. God. Boo. How do we turn him off? Is there a way? To... <laughs> uh, no, but to be able to uh, just go and be like, hey, guys, I don't know if visitors are welcome. I hope they are. But just to be able to participate, that that was more my question. I think it was, oh, I had a, one of my daughters actually had a, a social studies teacher in high school who who encouraged that. Uh -huh. And so she did. She one Sunday, she went with a, a friend of who was Catholic and went to her mass. And she cool. said that was really cool. And and one of the things she came one thing, her friend was shocked, like, wait, aren't you? Isn't this against your faith? And she yeah. says, well, no. Um, but the other thing is, is that she came out going, you know, I knew this already, but it was a good reminder that you can feel the spirit in other places. Other people have access to the spirit as well. Sure. And this was worship services and it was beautiful and peaceful. So it was, oh. it was a good experience for her. But yeah, being in Utah County, it's not like I run into opportunities, but I should probably seek some out. That's yeah. kind of cool. The in Utah County. Yeah. yeah I want to go to, I want to go to the, and they go to another ward. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to check out a different church. Oh, it's that one. No, it's just, wait. Yeah. Well, when I was so, a kid, I believed my church was the only true church. And what I thought what they meant was my church, my physical church war building. building. So one time <laughs> I got into an argument with someone at, at school that, no, my church no, is the, and we were in this big argument about it. Oh, so. that happened with one of my kids. We actually moved right after my son was baptized uh -huh. and he expressed relief. That, that he was baptized in the true church because now we moved. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, we need to have a conversation, yeah. son. That's not, There's a part that's not of what this. exactly what we mean. Yeah. All right, the Mitch, you've waited patiently. What did you want well, to add? I was, I was just going to say that um, earlier this year, I was doing kind of a personal deep dive into Lent and the celebration of Lent. Mm -hmm. And I was going, I had plans with a friend of mine who's a very devout Catholic mm -hmm. to go to her services like Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and all of these, they do a service with all of the stations of the cross and all of mm -hmm. that. But then there was a stupid snowstorm the day before Ash Wednesday on Fat Tuesday. Sure. And like all the, like there was no way she could get out of her house to go to Ash Wednesday and neither could I. Um, so we have plans that in 2024, that's what I will be doing around that time. And so I'm very excited about it. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. Andrew, you are next for the news article. What have you to share, sir? So I have an article that showed up in the Deseret News about the Deseret Industries. And basically the way I sum this up is that Deseret Industries turning your grandma's old couch into something else, someone else's retro chic living room centerpiece <laughs> since 1938. Yes. So <laughs> it, they have now, they're 85 years, um, the Deseret Industries, and and, and they've, they've helped a, a thousands of people get back on their feet they started during the depression and i just think the story is is really amazing that 
the way they built this up and how it's changed over the years, but it's always been there to support those, to get people from uh, not being able to support themselves to a place where they can support themselves, which is, is the whole goal of our welfare system within the church and everything else. It's, and, and that's where I got my 1937 Gibson guitar. Wow. Which is worth about $5,000. My uncle got it for a hundred bucks in one of those old silent, auctions he just said hey there it is i'll just put a hundred bucks on walked away he called him he won it and then i i was bequeathed that later on it was only later that we found out what it really was but anyway all the cool things so the treasures you can you know you might find johnny widstow's missing hat (laughs) i mean there's all kinds of things you can find at the desert industry but the best thing about it is that it is designed to help people teach them skills, get them, get them working and get them on their feet so they can support themselves, which 85 years of that, that's a wonderful um, scenario. For sure. Yeah. I, I am impressed. I have been doing, um, I am laying groundwork for a non-religious uh, podcast um, that I might be doing um, that is talking essentially about the idea of self-reliance, which sounds very Mormon, but the idea is like, like self-reliance in, in, in its very essence. Anyway, one of the things that I appreciate about the Desert Industries is this that- This tagline should be, get up off your lazy butt and go to work. Yeah, perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's a little long. Maybe if we could get a little shorter. Is that um, if people need help from the church, we give them, uh, and it's the cliche statement, but it's true, we give them a hand up, not a hand out, because just giving people something, you know, okay, great, I've got something. But how are they going to get out of the situation there? And you're you're talking about like manager jobs. You're talking about, you know, an opportunity to get an education, get a little bit of income to be able to have a track record of employment. It's it's a huge deal. So when you're thinking about places that you would take your stuff or places that you would purchase your stuff, you know, it's not just Utah. There's some down in Vegas. I know there's uh, Idaho, now too, right? Oregon. Isn't there one in Texas? I'm pretty sure, Mr. Mayor. There probably is, but it's not near me. If there yeah. is, if it is, it's probably near the San Ant- one of the temples, either Dallas, um, Houston, or the San Antonio Temple. Um, but there is Goodwill, and Goodwill yeah. has a very similar mission. And sure. the church donates and supports local efforts through Goodwill and other other organizations like that with sure. Catholic and that's about Catholic to tell ministries us and everything else. Where yeah, the... yeah, he's like, I'm looking it up. Oh, wow. So we've got Washington State, okay. Oregon. Mm-hmm. There's four in California, two right. in Arizona, okay. one in Vegas, okay. Texas. Idaho. I was gonna say Idaho. Um, I'm not not seeing Texas. No, nope, no, nope, there, nope. Just kidding. There is one in Texas. It looks like it's it's it was off the map for a second there. I think it's in Houston. Yeah. There we go. See. And it's whenever you go there, you more. should call it like my mom always called it, not the DI. She called it the DNI. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why <laughs> all my life it was called the dni and then i was like oh that means well, i don't get it <laughs> on the next episode of uh the cultural hall i visit with mr mayor's mom and find out first of all why does she call it the dni and second of all why didn't you stop before you had andrew listen to- oh <laughs> you know what i could probably arrange that I, I, we'll see Let and she'd be happy that. to talk to you about that uh megan the mitch what's what news story have you all right so there is a fun reality show on abc called claim to fame have you guys heard of it no i had not heard of it before but it is hosted by the oldest joe bro kevin jonas and his lesser known brother frankie and what they do is they get people there's a reason why frankie wasn't part of the group by the way he's kind of a geek it's true. But, and wasn't but, he a lot younger though? It was, yeah. 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 But they uh they get people who are related to celebrities to come and live in a house together and they all try to figure out who's related to whom and each week somebody is eliminated. But there is one uh contestant on this season that nobody can figure out and everybody has guessed wrong and uh currently and if you look at the pictures this makes sense. Most viewers believe that he is the son of Donny Osmond. His okay. name is Chris. Okay. And he um he totally some of uh, right, exactly. If you look at the picture, you're like, that is Donny Osmond. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But some of the clues have been like there's a big collage board on the wall and there's a little uh, Angel Moroni statue. 
Okay. Um, he also talked about how his uh, relative has a star on the Walk of Fame, the Hollywood mm. Walk of Fame, that they're <laughs> from Utah. And somehow that led people to guess that he it's was Post either- Malone's the, kid. Obviously. <laughs> but that has led other contestants to guess that he was the son of Elvis mm. or the son of Elton John. What? So I'm, I'm just surprised at how clueless, like when Donny Osmond himself was on like the, what is it? You know, the masked singer. The masked singer. singer. The yep. clues were like, I was just was looking at, I'm like, well, obviously that's Donny Osmond. I mean, it was, it had, voice. It had, well, it was like, they had like a little montage of an yeah. introduction and there was a, there was like a book of Mormon and a temple. And then there was like the Joseph. It tells you how little Joe. pop culture, Mormon I'm like, pop obviously. culture is known outside of the Mormon. A- clearly. Exactly. So none of these yeah. contestants obviously know. Oh, one of the clues was, his relative wore a coat of many colors. Yeah, oh, you know, Donny Osmond's. So if it's Joseph, not his son, you know? it's his nephew. Or yeah, I mean, this, well, this is I, definitely an Osmond. Like, yeah, hello. it's yeah. it's it's an it's an Osmond for sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just really funny because uh, nobody can figure it out. Some of the other guests have been Eddie Murphy's daughter, hmm. uh, Jenny McCarthy's niece, okay. Jimmy Carter's grandson. Okay, so. You know, Dolly Parton's niece has been on this show. So uh... new idea, new idea. We should start a Mormon version of this, but it's really about family history. Who yes. are you related to? And like, you all get <laughs> Me, in the room no and like, one. I'm Brigham Young, and no, I'm, right. I'm I'm John D. Lee, part of the Mountain Meadows Massacre people. I mean, like, it could be. I'm I... related to no one. No. Well, no. there could always be that one person who's like, I am the pioneer in my own family. <laughs> well, and that's no. honestly, you know, like the family search app that you can yes. see how closely you're related. I am never related to anybody ever that's hilarious. because my, my mom's an immigrant and then my dad's parents are both immigrants. I have mm-hmm. no pioneer blood in me. So I'm like, I no. No, and everyone else like, oh, we're eighth cousins. Like, no, Aside no, no. from a net, though, I think that that game would be really fun. And if I the, could host it, if the yeah, there, you go. there it is. And it, at the end. <laughs> It turns out that everyone is related to everyone. That's the yeah. well, every time. Here's the, here's the thing. We actually we had a. This is going to sound fancy, but we had a dinner party at our house a few what? weeks ago. It doesn't, it doesn't sound fancy at all. It was yeah. amazing. I made I made Italian. It was it was great fun. We had like <laughs> oh now it cu- sounds fancy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but we had Since five couples. Italian. Exactly. We had uh, five couples there and we decided to pull out our phones and we were doing that exact thing. Uh And even like my friend, she's a convert. Her husband's not a member. And she found out that she's related to all of us sitting at the table. Her Mm -hmm. husband couldn't get the app to work, but it was just so funny because I'm like, hey, husband we're 10th cousins, <laughs> you know, or, Hey, uh, Hey friendo, we're, uh, we're 14th cousins once removed. So that's a real, real close connection there. It was, let, it was, it was fun conversation. Let this serve as a warning to you. If you have dinner parties and drink a little too much Martinelli's, you break out the, fa- <laughs> the family history app and it gets, goes wild. It gets a little, gets a little intense yep, guys. That's it's right. like, gets a little off the rails. You think those oh. swingers Tinder parties are, are, yeah. are big? No, this was not, even more not wild. To find a relative <laughs> app coming out. Oh boy! Oh, oh there so are funny. two jokes I'd like to make to that that I can't. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, this is terrible, and you guys probably, if you're anything like me, have been following this story. But the just horrendous, horrible, terrible devastation going on on the island of Maui, particular in the in the township of Lahaina, uh, a quick go around. Have you guys all been there? I think Megan, you've told me you've been to Maui. Yes. No. I, I have never been to Hawaii. I haven't, but I've my daughter, my oh. daughter, Megan, who, you know, um, uh-huh. she, that, that's where she had her honeymoon two years ago. So Oof. okay, yeah, it's, yeah, I haven't been there though. So, uh, it's an older part of the Island. Not that, you know, anything is terribly new. Um, but it, as I understand it, there were wildfires, crazy, crazy fast winds from, um, Hurricanes that didn't necessarily hit uh, the island itself, but winds sort of whipped up these fires. And um, maybe uh, it, this is interesting enough. Um, when I was teaching my lesson yesterday in church, today is Monday. This will publish either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I said, oh, and the terrible, horrible travesties that are going on in uh, in Maui. And there were a couple of people in our elders quorum who had no idea what I was talking about. So if mm. I'm sharing this with you the, for the first time, I apologize. It's been in the news for a week or so. Um, but these wildfires just ripped through these buildings um, so quickly that uh, people had to jump into the ocean to avoid uh, burning. Um, 
At last report, I think it was that there were near 100 people who had perished in the fire. And 89 yesterday, they got up to 96 as of an hour. And they expect more. Yeah. Yeah. And they're expecting more. Yeah. Because they, as I understand it, they've only searched like 5% of the area that has burned. And so, um, there have been certainly the the photos that we see, kind of the drone, the whole area. Uh, a friend of mine from elementary through high school, her fam- or her, she and her family were able to get out. Their house is completely gone, completely gone, yeah. with not even like the structure of the base. It's like it's just there like was a house, house there. It is yeah. now gone. There's nothing um, there. Yeah. Zone. Uh, there the LDS church there in the area has become a safe haven for people to be able to go and to stay there. Uh, they're not horribly large uh, buildings, so they're only able to do so much. But um, the governor and mayor of the, you know, I think county of Maui, I think is how they divide that up. So there's a mayor for like the whole island, um, has encouraged people that uh, if you're not from there or need to be there to not go there um, because of a, the drain on the resources and then, you know, the attention to if something happens to you while you're there, then they could be doing other things with their time and with their attention. Um, the church has sent a tremendous amount of, um, you know, money to those services that are there on the ground, um, supplies as well. And actually, um, talking to the, my, the friend who lost her house, there is quite the organization of saints. And because of their connectivity, have been able to say there are seven sites You know, the blank family is taking care of getting stuff from the main hub to this site. And so because of the structure of the church and the quick to action, the church is actually playing the church in lieu of its uh, or by way of its members is actually taking a significant role in uh, the delivering of aid to the people here on this island. And if you look at the picture, it's terrible. It's a war zone. It looks like a war zone. It does. And I, the, on, on the 11th, what was three days ago, as we're recording this, um, the church newsroom had a, a little thing about how four Latter-day Saints died and the family of four died in a car mm-hmm. trying to escape, which is mm-hmm. just absolutely heartbreaking. And one thing, so this is, again, my daughter was telling me when she was on her honeymoon, there had been, you know, people argue about, oh, it's, it's tourism bad for Hawaii and all, all of this stuff. And so she said, you know, I, I asked our Uber driver, like, I sincerely, what, what's your opinion on some of this? And he said that, you know, we tourists, we don't mind at all. In fact, I wouldn't have a job if, you know, I didn't, right. you guys, as each part of the economy, he says, the problem is when people come to the islands and then don't go back because that mm-hmm. displaces people. It's so expensive to live here that you have generations of one family living in one house. And that's the only generational wealth they have to give. And yeah. they're working three jobs, one person. Right. And so, you have, right. so these, if now these houses are gone, they can't probably can't rebuild. They might have to leave their ancestral home. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that, that, that part kind of just broke my heart when she explained mm-hmm. some of that. I had, I had no idea that that was part of the problem is, you know, rich white people moving to, to Hawaii and displacing people and those who could stay on and were hanging on by their fingernails, mm-hmm. you know, now maybe they can't. That's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, in the link in the show notes uh, to this particular story, there will also be a reputable place where if you feel compelled and have not yet donated or have donated and want to yet donate more, a way for you to be able to click into donate. We'll make sure that it is a... Um, a researched, a sussed out, uh, reputable place where you can place some money. And I know that a lot of people have done that. So if yeah. you feel compelled to do that, be sure that you do find that link in the show notes, click through and do it. Um, you guys, we've got time for everybody to do one more news story. So pick pick a good one because this is, this will be your legacy. So should we Forever. go should we go happy or should we go serious? It's you are do- welcome to do whatever you like because know that I will have the very last word. Okay. Yes, one of you guys take the story that I'm going to do, in which case I'll still have the last word. It will just be a different one. You know, okay. Well, let's see. Well, I will. This is a story that some people might find a little controversial on my opinion on it, but um, that the whole Sound of Freedom movie and Operation Underground Road and all of that stuff, um, there are a lot of things that have come out showing that it's there's a lot of falsehoods that have been told by Tim Ballard, who founded Operation Underground Railroad, criminal investigations, all the stuff, um, and that his organization may have actually been making child sex trafficking worse by some of their methods tend to encourage 
traffickers to find younger victims and whatnot. Anyway, I, there's a whole bunch of articles, one bit specifically in the Salt Lake Tribune about some of this. Um, but basically, I know some people say, well, sex trafficking is a real problem. And I'm like, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So let's find other organizations that we know for sure are doing good. Um, but Tim Ballard is, he's been caught in a lot of lies and exaggerations. And it's, it's enough for me to go, I will, if I want to support and donate, I will find a different organization to do that. So I will include links to some of the, some of the hubbub around that. Well, and, and tangentially, there was another article that talks about uh, the Harmon brothers who helped fund or get the funding for uh, Sound of Freedom, uh, them and Daryl Eves, I think is his name. He's a, 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 a producer, a video producer, um, sort of helped with the the chosen, right? Same kind of model. Donate, mm -hmm. we'll make this happen in order to be able to get it to where it was in the movie theaters. And now it's, you know, been able to to make millions of dollars as far as that goes. It, it's hard to say because on the one hand, it's a tremendous... Uh, you know, it's a tremendous amount of work that these people that created this film have done. Mm -hmm. And there are there is questionable content within it that you go, hey, is this actually accurate? And sex trafficking is very terrible and needs to be eradicated. And and so, yeah, I mean, exactly. I think it's... that it's important to know to know all of it. But sometimes we get into a, an either or or a no but and i think that it can be it can be this and also this to be able to have that kind of space for it yeah. i appreciate you bringing that up uh mr mayor what have you what is your last word well it turns out angels and this isn't surprising angels have a higher approval rating than most politicians okay. um there angels there's a have angels okay uh, it's just that's that's my I, that's that's me. I'm saying that. No, the, the, there's an article in the uh, um, Associated News, um, so you can see it in multiple sources. Um, uh -huh. That came out about seven in ten U.S. adults believe in angels. So okay. this is kind of LDS adjacent, just because. So and it surpasses the belief of things like hell, astrology, astrology, reincarnation, everything else. But people absolutely believe in angels. So. Hmm. I just thought that was really important that even above, like even above necessarily God, they don't know what to deal with God, but they do believe in angels. I mean, they believe in God, but they don't know what to much more than that, but they believe in angels and angels are there. Angels are there with them and around them. And they feel like angels are supporting them and strengthening them. It's kind of a cool article to talk about that. I, I just had to say, you know, but it does explain why I've, I've gotten those those parking spots from time to time you know it's the angel valet services like when i'm yeah, just like sure. oh i need that parking yeah, spot we, we call it the parking Boom. ferry yeah 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 so i have to ask you um in i all, don't know I'm in all kidding. of the things False, all the above. in all of the things that you could talk about as your last story you decided mm -hmm. You guys can't hear this. No, we can't. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Oh no. I should Reggie's make it so can, I should make you uh <laughs> No, this is great. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, okay, there we go. Now you're gonna have to find the episode. <laughs> yeah, we heard that last little bit. A little bit. So 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 I do believe in angels, and in fact, in my book I talk a lot about that idea. All right, I got to turn this down so I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> Everyone, uh, I love it. I absolutely love that people that will hear that will hear that before you guys hear. <laughs> oh, this is uh, going to be good. What that was because this is terrifying. On. Richie could play all kinds of scary things. I mean, yeah. it literally could be anything. It it, it could with the with the power. This could be like a, a early hand. morning, um, like drive time hour, you know, shock jock radio, and he's like playing all kinds of things yeah. behind that. Yeah, he's He'll just do. tapping into his roots. You know. You'll just have to you'll have to go and listen to it, you guys. Find the cultural hall wherever you find uh, your favorite podcasts. However, this is a show. Uh, Megan, you've got a story. Let me hear it. I do. So, uh, it, under the segment of Saints Who Sport with Megan the Mitch. Oh, okay. Um, Bryce Harper. Thing. I appreciate it. I it, appreciate it. We're making it a thing. It. Yeah, for okay. real. So Bryce Harper, who plays baseball for the Phillies. Uh -huh. helped reunite a cute little seven-year-old with his brothers Aww. they were having um the phillies were doing like a promo 
promotional photo night where like fans could take pictures with the with the players or the team or whatever. Okay. And he noticed this cute little seven year old named Caleb was sitting there sobbing. Oh, and he Caleb. was looking terrified and oh. sad. And Bryce Harper went over and Bryce Harper being a dad, he looks like he just tapped into dad mode and asked him, you know, what's going on, buddy? What, what's, why are you sad? And he had gotten separated from his two older brothers. And so he was naturally very scared sure. and nervous. And Bryce Harper being the excellent uh, saint that he is who sports, um, he <laughs> made sure that this cute little boy, Caleb, got reunited with his family. And it's making all sorts of news because... Bryce Harper is just a good guy. And mm. also Zach Wilson has a new girlfriend and that's the end of that story. Do do we do uh, is she a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? I don't believe so. She went to Catholic school in New Jersey. Okay. And well, she's a fashion went to Catholic designer. School, so watch it. I have no problem with people but my grandpa went to uh, Judge Memorial High School was okay. raised Catholic. So no worries Catholic there. Here in Salt Lake. Exactly. Um uh, I would say from the appearance of pictures, if we were going off of like the LDS look, I'm going to okay. go with probably no, um, but he has vacationed with her family. She has vacationed with his family and it made national headline news that Zach Wilson has a new girlfriend. Mm -hmm. what, my, in my ignorance and for listeners who are as ignorant as I am, which sport does he sport? So he is the quarterback for the Jets, although Aaron Rodgers was just brought onto the Jets. So I think Zach Wilson is being demoted to he backup. Is. He is the backup quarterback. backup quarterback. And he was embroiled in all sorts of controversy last season. It was bananas. Her name is... Does the backup Nicholas? quarterback have that little sound? Beep, beep. Stupid. <laughs> um. <laughs> to quote Richie, boo. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see here. She is a influencer and model. Her name and is a fashion Nicolette, designer, Nicolette Delano. But I'm asking, as apparently not the first person who has done who has done this, is Nicolette Delano Mormon? Yeah, I'm going to say no. Yeah, my modar is not going off. Nope. At this point, which everyone will now come at us because that's highly judgmental, but I don't think so. But, it's, but it's sometimes... maybe she's taking the missionary discussions. But you sometimes don't know. Modar is a thing. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Just... Absolutely. All right. So here's the last story as we end this out, um, which also let this serve as a warning to everyone read Mr. Mayor. The end is coming of the episode, so try not oh, to crap. screw it up. I better pull that up. And I better with, pull that. And with four of us, it's going to be good. Us will have to be creative in what we outro the show. So, if you you don't know who's going to go first, so have something ready for the outro. And no. and uh, and something I'll talk about in the future. I met with some folks with the from the church history department today, and they said they absolutely love the outro. How clever! You guys are so charming, they said. Okay, so here's the last story. Uh, and there is a GoFundMe associated with this as well. I'm not sure if you guys heard this story. Um, standing in front of extended family and friends, 19-year-old Liam Mildenstein, or Steen, began to read aloud his missionary assignment for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was excited. He was hoping with, quote, all of his heart that it would be Japan, a place that uh, had significance to his family. They had driven from Miami to Provo for a vacation. His mission call arrived. He gathered everyone. But just after he read where he would ultimately serve, Tokyo, Japan, he collapsed backward onto the floor. Medical personnel called immediately, but Liam never regained his pulse. He was pronounced dead about an hour later, the family said. Liam's older brother, Kelton, said that Liam had no known health conditions and didn't have medical issues growing up. The family is awaiting an autopsy report. There were no signs of anything leading up to it. Uh, it was such a shock that it feels unreal, truly an unexplainable tragedy. The family has set up a GoFundMe campaign. Uh, so if people would like to donate that, there is that link in the show notes. Um, they are devastated, as you can probably imagine. Uh, all this completely surreal and being far from home creates so many difficult circumstances. He had talked nothing about, uh, no, he had talked about nothing but his mission for the past year. And it was his dream since he was young to serve in Tokyo, Japan. 
Further details not available at this point, but his um, his GoFundMe fund has raised, as of this recording, $42,000. So if you feel compelled to donate to that elder and, and to that family as they grieve and, and move their way through and, and all of that stuff, you can um, you can check that out. That's in the show notes. You guys... I hope that this episode has nourished and strengthened your body. Take that. I took one of the easy ones. That if you're not healthy enough to listen this week, you'll be able to listen next week. We hope that you will have no harm or accident. And we hope that you will be able to take what you have learned and incorporate it into your lives. Oh, no, no, no. You got the, you missed one word into your daily lives. Into your daily life. <laughs> you have to into your daily life. Do you love that? We all speak the same way. We can yep. take it into our daily lives. Lives. Yep. Yeah. Into our lives. Nope. Daily lives. Daily it's lives. Always daily lives. Am I I'm not making it up, right? You're not. Oh no. Not at all. No, no, no that's say. exactly what it is. Uh in the meantime, we'll be saving a seat for you. On the back row. On the back row. On the back row. Of the no, cultural, the cultural, cultural hall. hall. The disaster I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs>